Welcome to this week's edition of Morning Line, the USTA's weekly news magazine. I'm Paul Ramlow. And I'm Allison Conti. The talk of the town so far this season has been three-year-old Wiggle It Jiggle It. And while he has yet to face the best of his division, including the likes of Art Speak and In the Arsenal and Go Daddy Go, he has certainly managed to stamp himself as a very serious contender for the North America Cup, if not the likely favorite. He blistered to a 149 flat track and world record around Harrington Raceway's half mile oval under minimal urging this past Monday. The plan was between 52 to 50 because that's, that's what, usually what his comfortable speed is, um, just to take it easy on him. Um, but once I went out there and they kind of got me to the quarter up on time and everything like that, I just, I, I didn't shake his head this time. Usually at Meadowlands, I shook him off and tried to rate him. I just let him do what he wanted to do this time. A, a freak. I mean, the more I went, the more, the stronger he got. He's like a complete opposite of a normal horse. His time was two-fifths of a second faster than the previous world record, co-held by pacing greats Some Beach Somewhere and Rock and Roll Heaven, an accomplishment that hit home for trainer Clyde Francis. Amazing feeling, you know, that had a horse to accomplish something like that, right? And especially in front of the hometown crowd, anyway. Jogger this morning was good and sound, so. And Next up, we're um, planning to head to Canada rather than go out to Indiana. None outside of Rainbow Blue that you could eat, you know, that you could compare him with. I mean, she was extraordinary when you put him in that same category, maybe better than she was, you know. That's, and there were some big shoes to fill. Even make that statement. And the general consensus is that Wiggle It Jiggle It's lack of open stakes competition is no big deal, given his incredible talent. Last week on Morning Line, we asked you to sound off on social and let us know if Wiggle It Jiggle It is the one to beat in June's Pepsi North America Cup. Here's what you had to say. Was at the track Monday. He set that record on his own, Looked like he was ready for more. My money will be on him, Pepsi Cup for sure, and Little Brown Jug. Wiggle It Jiggle It is a freak of nature, as evidenced by his world record mile at Harrington. He paced an effortless mile in 149. Wiggle It will have a good chance in NA Cup. Most will be getting warmed up, but he already has seasoning and is ready to go fast. Here is one finally that won't have to carry his dirt with him to win. Fantastic horse, and by the way, George keeps saying he is a good one. Are you listening? Wiggle It Jiggle It is an awesome horse. With eight straight wins, he should win the North America Cup, hands down. On Sunday, we saw the eliminations for the Confederation Cup at Flamborough Downs in Ontario, where all bets off and let's drink on it seem to stamp themselves as the ones to beat in Sunday's final. Both scored impressive victories by open lengths in their eliminations, and all bets off established a new track record with his 150-4 and four score. How do you feel about him coming into the Confederation Cup? I mean, every start he's been super this year. You know, he's a great half-mile horse, so, you know, just looking for a good draw. The other entry from the Burt Brigade, Limelight Beach, was the victim of a vicious duel with Ideal Cowboy, resulting in a 54-1 and half-mile, but he still finished fourth to make the final. Trainer Ron Burt feels that he's not one to forget about this week. Yeah, I mean, as much as anything, like, you know, half and 54 at Flamborough, you know, it's basically a half and 52 at the middle. I don't really know if he was up to that yet. Let's Drink On It was the benefactor of those fractions, swinging three wide in the final turn and pulling away from the field. Trainer Joe Siegman's only concern for next week is the post position draw. Well, you want to avoid seven, eight hole up there, you know, I think it looks like, you know, and, and the trailing horse, you know, is a little bit of concern, but uh, he, that is, you know, that is what it is. As luck would have it for Joe, the draw was not kind to his horse. Let's Drink On It drew post eight in the final. And in talking to trainer Ron Burke, we also got an update on Warhorse Foiled again. Burke said that he's now back in the barn, jogging well, and should qualify in two to three weeks. Which brings up this week's sound off on social question. There have been some serious setbacks in the older pacing ranks this year. Between health issues and retirements, there is definitely room for somebody to step up and carry the torch in that division. Which do you think of this year's four-year-olds will fill the void? Let us know on Facebook and Twitter at US Trotting for a chance to win some USTA swag. Be a magician, the five-year-old female trotter who is Harness Racing's 2013 Horse of the Year, has started her campaign with back-to-back -back wins over male rivals, first in a track record performance in the open handicap at Yonkers Raceway, and next from the Meadowlands post 10 in a prep for Saturday's Arthur J. Cutler Memorial. 
She will try to make it three in a row when she leaves from post eight with driver Brian Sears in the Cutler final this week at the Big N. Amer has never won the Cutler, which was first contested in 1998. In this week's edition of Paul's Paddock Picks, we take a look at Saturday's Cutler at the Meadowlands Racetrack. I will give Be a Magician the nod here, even from post position eight. After all, she won from the 10 hole last week. However, it won't be easy. Wind of the North was second to be a magician in last week's Cutler prep and could be right there at the finish again. Plus market share should be better this week after a sixth in his 2015 debut last week and he got a good draw with post three on Saturday. So I'll be going with be a magician to win, wind of the North to place, and market share to show. This week's tweet of the week comes from the Jonas Sarenson stable. With Hotshot Blue Chip coming out of retirement last week, at Team JC Stable tweeted, Hotshot is officially whack, winning in 56. But first, let's take a selfie. Hashtag return of a champion. Welcome back, Hotshot. Already Harness Racing's winningest driver, Dave Pallone reached higher into rare air May 13th at the Meadows Racetrack and Casino when he recorded career win 17,000. The landmark win came with upfront Dean in the very first race. Congratulations, Dave. That'll do it for this week's edition of Morning Line. Thanks for joining us and tune in next week for all your behind the scenes harness racing action. Including an inside look at the USTA's driving school being hosted this week in Goshen, New York. We'll see you next week here on the Morning Line.